Welcome to the show. That always happens to me. It doesn't tell me that it's live on here. I don't know why. Anyway, all right. Hey, everyone. I'm Nick Baldwin, uh, Lab Code Agents co-founder, and I am super excited because today's webinar is going to blow your freaking minds because we have the social media strategist for KW International and KW Worldwide or just international? Just, just international. I don't run the world. Oh, just the else. United States. Just the United States. Oh, not the whole world. Okay. Yeah, just US we'll and Canada. There. You know. <laughs> you know. You know. Just two. Just one giant continent. Um, Marlise Gowan, May Gowan. I just call you May because that's what it says You're everywhere. You're welcome to but... call me May. It's all good. Both work. Yeah. I respond to both. <laughs> so May is a social media strategist for Keller Williams. She's responsible for posting on all the channels that KW has: Facebook, Instagram, TikTok whatever else there is LinkedIn. <laughs> oh, the big five <laughs> LinkedIn, yeah and i think kw has almost a million followers combined and i know last year with all of the posts that you created uh you reached about 14 million people which is bonkers so thank you so much for joining us yeah i'm so happy to be here and to chat social media with y'all yeah it's super fun so um tell everyone about you, um, how you got into into this position, because I once told you the last time we talked was like one day you were just like there, right? <laughs> and I'm like, who is this girl? She's in all the videos and posting everywhere. So where did you come from? What's your background? And tell us a little about yourself. Uh, yeah, so I originally, my first job doing social media marketing was um, at a boutique real uh, marketing agency in DC, and we specialized in doing marketing for home builders. So like I was running campaigns for Ryan and Envy Homes and um, Ryland Homes, which I don't even think exists anymore, but like really big yeah. international home builders and like representing their community, their like smaller communities as like social media page, Facebook pages, basically. Um, and when I moved to Austin, there happened to be a position re related to social media and real estate at Keller Williams. And I joined April, 2017. Um, and from there, it kind of hit the ground running. There was a lot, a lot of, a lot of channels already established. We were already on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, all of that. Um, and a lot of new things started changing on Instagram and Facebook during that time too. So a lot of new opportunities opened that kind of co like collided with, opportunities that were happening inside of the company. So like one of the big things that happened was mega relief um, at the end mm, of 2015. Yeah. And that was the first time I did any sort of social media stories coverage. Sure. For Real Williams. quick for the non-KW agents watching, just explain what that was. It was during oh. the hurricane. Yeah. Um, during Hurricane Harvey, uh, Houston, Texas and the surrounding area was really badly affected. And um, we had this conference planned uh, to happen during that week. And we looked at our morals as a company and decided that, you know, what we really needed to do was be there for our communities and show up. Um, so we pivoted something very familiar yeah. to the Keller Williams uh, Titanic of a ship. Um, and we decided to, instead of having mega camp, which is, you know, a week long training event that we invite our leadership and, you know, Max is heavily involved with, and, you know, hopefully you attended the digital version, but, you know, this was in person in Austin during th that time. Um, and we decided instead of having our training event, instead of having Gary on stage and talking about real estate and how to sell homes, we were going to go and help people rebuild their homes. Um, so it was a really powerful, emotional event for everybody that was involved with putting that on. And I felt, you know, we had to tell that story on social media. And um, the best way that seemed to do that was on stories um, and mixing that in with our other content. And that doing that kind of stories coverage is what led to me doing family reunion that next year and actually being like, I think what we need to do this is like, I need to, I need to be on camera and interview our agents and interact and like be the person that's guiding our audience through this experience. And from there that led to recap videos, which led to doing even more on camera stuff, which is like, why all of a sudden, like, it's like, oh, I'm doing TikToks now. Oh, I'm doing like the platform walkthrough for family reunion. Oh, I'm like, you know, I'm doing yeah. all these different things where I'm on camera and it might seem like I came out of nowhere, but it's actually been this you know, four year long journey of building up trust and um, really proving what my vision is for our channels and like what we can be doing there and mm -hmm. how me as a person fits into that versus the rest of the content that we're creating as a marketing team and as a company as a whole, um, there's room for so much. That's what's so fun about social media. Um, so 
that's kind of where it kind of goes. So like, there's a lot that I do where it's like, I'm helping uh, the rest of the marketing team kind of crafting other campaigns. Like when we did pivot shift ahead, for instance, you know, I was involved with the Facebook, the giant Facebook group that was involved with that. But like my person wasn't involved with that. I was like, oh, we should create graphics to support this campaign. We should put those up on Instagram. And like, I'm, but like my, me, Marlise May is not, I wasn't like, I'm involved with pivot, but like something like TikTok where it's like, you need a person, you need like someone to make those jokes. I'm the person that kind of steps in and is like, let me represent like the personification of Keller Williams in this way. So yeah. So long answer. That's a, that reminds me of the last time we talked, you know, uh, and, we're, and then we're going to get into some strategy guys for you guys to, you know, she's going to teach you like different things you should be thinking about when you're posting on different platforms as an agent. But yeah. I want to talk about like the scale of now essentially being, not essentially, but being the face of KW on all of the social platforms on video and in photos and on TikTok. And, you know, I would assume that there's some pressure there, right? Because first of all, you have a big audience. And second of all, a lot of the audience is KW agents and you're essentially um, spe like speaking for them in a, in a way, right? And so how do you figure out what, I mean, you can't please everybody, yeah. but how do you figure out what to post? So like everyone kind of feels aligned with it. Um, well, that, that's a really good question. And <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of pressure. I, I definitely feel as far as making sure, I'm, I mean, I'm representing the brands like Keller Williams and like all like what KWRI stands for. And yeah, and also our agents as a whole. So yeah, I mean, it is tricky, but one of the really things that makes it easier is our culture. Right. And like yeah. that, like a united culture that we have at Keller Williams um, makes it easy so that like we tend to be focused on the same things. Um, Gary makes it easy. You know what he is talking about and focused on and what Josh is talking about and focused on and what our leadership is talking about and focused on. We as a company tend to get an alignment around all of that. And that gives me kind of the framework that I can think about, like, well, what jokes can I make about this? Or like what what uh, like kind of tropes or, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, what's the word, um, you know, like, uh, stereotypes or like, you know, the sort of things that you can make a generalized joke that applies to such a large audience about. So it's like, okay, like right now we're talking about how we're in a, uh, seller's market. What are the kind of jokes? Like, what are, what are the things that are on our agents' minds about, about that, that I can make some jokes about, or, mm -hmm. you know, what about just like being a part of Keller Williams resonates on a whole? Um, what are our like value props? What, what can I make kind of joke around about what are things that are just like universal to being a real estate agent that I can bring the Keller Williams spin to. Um, yeah. So those are all of those kind of really cool things that you can do um, within a like kind of giving yourself that framework. I actually prefer right. to have boundaries around what the yeah. content that I'm making than a free for all. Um, and as far as another thing that really helps is hearing from our agents, being plugged into things like lap code agents and command your morning and hear the conversations that happen on our channels and in the comment section on other pieces of content. Um, getting to, I miss our events in person so much because just getting to talk to our agents and connect with them that way also informs so much of what are, what are you really concerned about? What are you thinking about? What do you think is funny? Um, I love following our own agents and their content. I'm inspired so much by the stuff that y'all are also putting on your channels too. Cause I'm like, oh, this is something that is really an issue or this is something that is like y'all are like kind of struggling with in a good natured way. Like how can I, yeah. how can I bring that into what we're talking about? No, that's awesome. And so I think that, that even though you're doing this for a company as big as KW, I think on a micro level, you know, you have a single agent or a team, you know, they can definitely take a lot of what you just said, right? Like, what do you represent? What's your brand? Yeah. You know, where, where do you want to focus? And then once you hone that in and essentially you have to put boundaries, boundaries around it because you want to align a certain way and then you can create content from there, find out who you want to be and who you want to attract. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and you put out some, you do put out some funny stuff. Like you did some really funny stuff around Zillow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, and a lot of that stuff goes on TikTok. How do you decide that'll pivot me into this? How do you decide what goes on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? Like, how do you decide which platform to post it on? Because before I let you answer, um, agents, I don't think have that idea, right? Like, what's the right platform for the message I want to put out into the world? And how do you figure that out? 
Yeah. Um, so you have to be familiar with the platforms too, because um, one of the things that I like hammer home all the time about social media is that you have to be active on the channels that you're using to promote your brand on. Like you, there is a language that kind of evolves on each social media channel and like it's subtle but it's like a, just a way that people interact with each other and the things that are going that people want to be talking about on that channel versus what they don't want to be talking about on that channel and the more you spend time on your favorite channels and especially when you kind of have like one or two or three different channels you know you don't have to have five like I do um but, but like you know the more time you spend on them you realize you you start to notice the nuances of okay on twitter like we tend to, it tends to be more text-based and it tends to be more of a conversation. And there tends to be a topic of the day that everyone is kind of coalescing around. And like, that's what, that's kind of what it is. And me trying to talk about something that's not this topic of the day on Twitter, it's going to just like kind of go out into like, into the ether, right? Um, versus right. something on Facebook, which is like a video is always going to do better than something like that. So what's the video content that I can like thinking about what performs well on that channel, as well as the kind of way that people interact with that channel. Um, right. So um, like Instagram tends to be more community based and like these Facebook pages, like especially like something like a Keller Williams page or your personal uh, real estate brand page, like, uh, you know, like Nick Baldwin's big Instagram page, you can turn those into micro communities where um, you can kind of have the things that you're talking about and the things that are important to you. And in the comment section, you can kind of foster this sort of engagement and this consistency where people are going to show up and have these kind of micro conversations and, you know, like share their like cute little comment or their word of support or an aha that they had. Um, and if you can kind of foster that, you start to be like, okay, well, what's the kind of content I can put on Instagram that my audience is like, I know that people are going to want to comment or share or, um, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. So it's, you have to spend time on the channels and kind of figure out what, what other people are doing successfully, pay attention to other people, as well as what you're doing and people resonate, like looking at your own data as well. Um, uh, but then there's yeah. like, you know, actual basic tips that I can give, about you know like oh on this channel you should be doing this versus this channel you should yeah. be doing this this channel you should be doing this it's like but then your flair as a marketer for your own business is that you can kind right. of take those those guidelines and figure out how to really customize it for yourself one of the things i heard was facebook is for shares instagram is for experiences so yes. if you look at it that way right um that might i know that when i heard that it really resonated and helped me figure it out a little bit more. Um, so there's a couple questions I want to get to. Um, and they're really good, actually. So Connie, who's watching on Zoom, you know, she says she hears, quote, what's your brand all the time, but she doesn't really understand or know how to hone in on that. What's, what do you think she should do or anyone who is thinking about the same thing should do? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And yeah, one of the first things that any any person that you're talking to a marketer is going to say like, well, you really got to stay loyal to what your brand is. And <laughs> the question of like, oh, what's my brand is kind of insane. Um, and I mean, it it's easy when you have something like a, a whole company where there's, you know, since 1983, they've been developing a Keller Williams brand that I just got mm -hmm. to have handed to me and then be like, okay, let's see like, where we're going. But your brand, when you're thinking about what your brand is, um, it's you. Um, so like, think about what attributes you are bringing to your business that you, you really highly value. What are your, your, what are your unique selling propositions? That's a very big marketing term, but, um, your USP, like what, what are you bringing to the table personality wise, education wise, business wise, whatever. Um, and what that makes you unique. Um, and then, lean into like kind of explore from that. Like I would do some brainstorming once you kind of start with like a little list of like, what do you think about yourself and your business that you think is really great and really special and kind of write that list down and then brainstorm around the things that come up around that. So what what other associated things can you come up with? So if your brand is, um, you know, your unique selling propositions, I'm gonna kind of th try to think about this for me um, off the top of my head, but like, you know, what I'm bringing to the table is that I am friendly and that I have, like, I'm going to make some jokes and, but I'm also super knowledgeable about social media content. Um, and so like, okay, so like, those are three things that I'm bringing to the table to make me special. So like, how can I start to lean into those things? So, okay, let me try to make a series of videos where I'm going to try to explain 
some social media tips. Um, okay, some funny things like, okay, like what are some funny jokes that I can make around social media that I can start posting onto my favorite channel? Like just, they start thinking about that that way. And when you kind of have that little framework and those adjectives, and then you have your actual business, figure out how to kind of marry them together. Um, and that's how I would start with your brand. Like you have to start with who you are and what your authentic vision is. You couldn't start with like, oh, I really like what Nick does on his Instagram and social media. So let me just copy that. I mean, yes, great, great marketers, you know, like steal, you know, like so many ideas that I have, I've seen, but like someone else do. And I like put my own twist on it, but I only do that to the ideas that actually make sense to my brand. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I think it's a lot of being informed and inspired by other people, but also like, okay, bringing it again, bringing it back to what those core values are, those core USPs are. Um, and that's how I would develop a brand. Yeah. A lot of people think that their logo is their brand. And so that's definitely not your brand. And in, in actuality, an attribute you can, of a brand. <laughs> right. Like you should let me know what you think about this. So like, I mean, I, I feel like the logo should be the last thing that someone comes up with. Right. Yes. I mean, it's essentially a reflection. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I mean, it is a reflection. Exactly what I was going to say is that yeah. like any good graphic designer is going to tell you that you're going to need a concept behind whatever you're designing. So if right. you don't know what your brand concept is, you're just kind of plain in word art, you know, <laughs> um, just right, being like, right, oh, right, I think right. this looks cool. And like, there might be things that inform that, like, oh, I'm really innovative. And like, I am really sleek. Like, I'm a luxury agent. I need this to look really, really sleek and professional. But like, you've already made that decision based off of your brain attribute, you know? <laughs> um, so yeah. yeah, you've got, yeah, I don't think you should have a, don't think come up with your brand first. Like start with your, what your USPs are and build your brand off of that. Got it. That's awesome. Hey, there's just two questions here that I want to get to. Um, so can you just mention the big five you stated, um, just so everyone understands what you're talking about, the big five social media platforms? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go in order of power. Um, Facebook, Instagram, both Instagram is owned by Facebook, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, and then TikTok. Um, cool, cool. So yeah. That, that's, awesome. that's kind of how it is. <laughs> I love that TikTok's in the big five already. Um, I wanted to also, uh, oh, there was one other question here. Let me get to this. Um, okay. So vision for the channel, quote unquote. So this is again, kind of Scott is asking this on zoom. I think this is kind of along the lines of, you know, what should the vision be? What should the brand be? Um, and that, and that's something that, you know, uh, may just explain, but I think like, here's, here's some examples. Uh, what, what type of real estate business do you want to run? Are you going to be very community oriented? Are you going to donate to charities? Is that going to be part of your value proposition like my team would donate a hundred dollars to the local animal shelter after every closing so we work that into our brand so like you know are you highlighting local businesses uh what are you doing and kind of con a lot of content can be created just around that really just yeah. around what you stand for and what is going on in your neighborhood so those are all really good questions so um i want to talk about you know um how how are you creating content um because that's one of the obviously one of the weak points you know agents all of a sudden you know one day we woke up and we had to be marketers right because there's yeah. all this digital media and we you know we didn't sign up for that necessarily no one talked about that in in real estate school it was all about here's how you read a contract so you know what's your what does your process look like for coming up with content across five channels. And I just want to say, you don't have to be on five channels. May's on five channels. I wouldn't channels. recommend that. It, right, makes no. sense. <laughs> no. it makes sense for Keller Williams, the international for brand, sure. but for Nick Baldwin's business, for y'all's business, no. no, you do not need to do that to yourselves. No. Like, honestly, it, it, like, I bet you, if you didn't have to, you probably wouldn't, but like, you know, it, it, coming up with content for each platform, what's your process for that? Um, well, luckily I have an amazing marketing team that I yeah. am just, but a part of, um, so, um, yeah. that gives me, a, I mean, a huge advantage over, you know, the average agent is that there's, you know, 25 plus minds that are all thinking about what kind of content that helps, that helps, that helps a little bit. So, um, <laughs> I was actually just having this conversation with, um, someone who works in worldwide too, just about like, don't look at the Keller Williams channel output and be like, oh my God, 
I should be out like Marlise. I see her doing all of this. It's all her. And she's a content machine. That's absolutely, that's just as like making it look easy. There's like a whole team of marketers that are coming up with all kinds of campaigns and amazing things that they put out for the Keller Williams associate and family across so many different channels and social media just happens to be a big place where so much of it goes. Um, so that's a reflection of so many people's work. Um, so while I'm involved with a lot of different campaigns and th stuff that gets shaped and put onto that channel, and ultimately I'm, I'm making the decision of what goes onto the channel and when and how, I'm not creating every single piece of content that goes onto that right. channel. So um, we have an amazing marketing team. Um, and I our channels would not look nearly as good if it was just me doing them. Um, so, but as far as figuring that out, um, I'm going to start with what I can answer as far as like what I actually do. And then I'll go into what y'all can do. So figuring out what to do with the channel. So I'm going to say I already have all this content. We have all these campaigns going on. We're, we're promoting family reunion. Uh, we have this new luxury branding coming out. I have graphics that I just want to share that are for social media specifically. I have um, out front articles that I need to share. You know, there's all this kind of competing content that's going into the week on our social media calendar. And basically, I look at all those pieces of content and I think about where they're going to perform best on each channel. So, oh, do we have a video? That's definitely going to have to go up on Facebook and Instagram. Do we have an out front article? That's definitely going to have to go up on LinkedIn. Um, do we have, is there like any sort of like memes that are popular right now that I could be turning into a joke that's going to go up on Twitter? Um, do we like, are, we call them buzz graphics, but are kind of, they're usually in designs, but they're kind of like our fun graphics. Like there's a mix of bed on red content, but you know, it's usually like our fun animations where it's like, here's a swinging KW sign or, um, you know, here's like our illustration for the housing market this month or whatever, like those, we call them internally buzz graphics. Um, so like, okay, we're going to make sure we put those out on Instagram and Facebook because they do really well there, but that's not something that I share on LinkedIn. Um, so it's really looking at the individual pieces of content that I have and then making assessments based on what I know performs well based off of just like actual metrics and my own yeah. data. Um, so that's how I figure out what to post uh, or like, you know, how to post and what to post. But as far as creating the content to post, um, that is like, I, again, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going back to this, but like, what are your USPs? And you touched on this earlier, Nick, um, you know, if you if charitable giving is a big part of your organization, how many pieces of content can you make out of like the idea of charity? Like there's so much, like, if you start with something zoomed out enough and high level enough, you can go all kinds of crazy places and figure out what makes sense for you as far as what your abilities are, what you actually like, um, and what you think will be fun and you'll want to continue to doing and you have the time to do. Um, so I making content is time consuming, period. Like there's just no way that managing a social media channel, coming up with stuff to do on it, engaging with your audience on that, that is that is time consuming work on top of all the work that you're already mm -hmm. doing as a real estate agent. And if you don't have a team or someone supporting your marketing, like that's on you. So that's all the more reason to get really strategic about what social media channel you're going to be on. Because I would recommend one or two if it is just you. Um, I have a lot of friends who basically run their, their entire real estate business off of Instagram. Um, and it, the Instagram is a great channel for that because it is so visual, it is community-based. Um, there's lots of different things you can do with inside of Instagram. So it's like, oh, I'm going to post a video or, I'm, or a photo in the feed. Or I'll post an IGTV, which is like 15 minutes where I'm going to really explain something. Or I can go live and do an interview with someone. Or I can post on stories and keep people posted on my date. Like there's so much within just that one platform that you can do so much with. And Facebook, I mean, yeah. mirrors a lot of that, but people <laughs> engage completely differently on Facebook. And who you're selling to is also on different social media platforms. Right. So if you are primarily selling to uh, Gen X, boomers, you know, old, an older crowd um, that is, you know, more established on Facebook, but not necessarily like they are, they have seen TikTok, but they do not understand. They're not on TikTok. They're not scrolling TikTok. Where are the people that you're selling houses to spending their time on social media? Cause that's really where you want to be too. Um, so that's really like, good advice. Like <clears throat> I just want to say for real estate agents, that's really good advice. Like people say, well, you know, where should I advertise this home? Right. Okay. Well, let's look at the house. Like, how much is it? Where is it located? You know, um, does how many bedrooms does it have? Um, you know, does yeah. does it have a backyard? And so, like, figure out who that would appeal to. Right. Like, if that's going to appeal to you, think like you know, first time buyers, late twenties, early thirties. 
you know, you might want to be on Instagram. If it's yeah. going to appeal to someone a little bit older, you might want to put it up on Facebook. So that's a really good point. Um, oh, Lelena Le- Le- just commented, yes. <laughs> Thank you for being so channel specific, May Gallon, similar to lead gen. Pull the lever that works best for you and who you're selling to. So, Lelena. Yeah, it's a part of lead gen, right? <laughs> Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Leilana is the uh, editor of Outfront Magazine, outfront.kw.com, which is a, an awesome publication. Um, yeah, so that's there's cool. There's lots of social media tips on Outfront as well. If you go on Outfront, yeah. for social media. We even made a calendar for you for the month of November. I think we're going to keep that up. We'll do that maybe quarterly or so. Mm-hmm. But lots of social media content ideas there. I would recommend checking yeah. out all of those articles if you are thinking about what to do. On, also very channel specific as well. And by the way, like there's a lot of stuff on out front that while it's branded to Keller Williams, it's, it's really content for everybody. So you can learn a lot, lead gen tips, social media tips. So don't be hesitant to check it out if you're with Remax or Cobalt Banker. Um, <clears throat> I want to say, because you are on so many different channels and you're posting, you know, negativity, like how I'm sh- like, you got to have such a solid mindset like and listen like when someone comments negative negatively we all know it's more it says more about them than you and you're yeah. running a company channel so it's not a personal attack on you mm. how do you deal with that right because i've seen some pretty nasty stuff a lot of it mostly on twitter when it comes to the kw like twitter people are mad everyone is um, mad on twitter that's just how yeah, twitter is. yeah so <laughs> like what do you what do you do how do you how do you like stay positive and, and just kind of ignore the rudeness because you have such um, a big platform. So I'm just curious. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it definitely gets to me. Um, and I would say earlier in my career, it got to me more. Um, I think I've gotten a little bit of a thicker skin. Um, I'm also not managing our inbox the same way. And that helps a lot. Um, but oh, uh, that, oh, yeah, you don't yeah, have to deal with um, like, someone else has direct messages. Yeah, we have a customer service team that's now handling our DMs and things. Oh, um, I mean, I, I do a little bit with the Instagram inbox, but that's the only one I'm really involved with. Like our Facebook inbox, I'm not really that involved with anymore, which is like very good for my mental health. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, well, I, I want to say, first of all, most of the time our agents are really delightful and kind and great in the comments. Um, and like and, and across the board, not just Keller Williams agents, like most of our comments textions tend to be positive, supportive, encouraging places, which is like, really amazing and lovely and makes my job great. I love, I love most of like 98% of the time, I'm like very happy engaging with our comment section. Um, when we do get negativity, um, almost all of it tends to be about Keller Williams, the brand and not about me specifically, which is, you, you mentioned that and that is like very <laughs> helpful. Um, but yeah, there's stuff that happens, especially um, on the very rare occasion where an agent has done something bad, um, you know, where it's you as a person. Okay, so like, at me, there's the brand response, but then there's like my personal emotional response to hearing something really sad or hearing something that makes me feel angry for whoever experienced something, um, whether that agent was actually for Keller Williams or just like human response of like, oh, this horrible thing happened to this person. And like, they're like so upset that they're like reaching out angrily or whatever. Um, and kind of feeling like like your human response versus like what your obligation as a brand response is and like what is actually appropriate to respond with like that's a little bit of attention sometimes um and yeah. i'm sure anybody could relate to that whereas like something happens and like your personal response is a little bit better like a little bit more nuanced and like emotional than what you're going to actually respond to professionally because you have a business to protect and you have to behave in a certain way right for sure um so i would say that that is kind of hard um but there's also you know Sometimes the good of that is that like when stuff gets brought to our attention, I'm able to ring that up to the flag, like the flagpole, you know, our legal team gets involved. Um, we're either like, oh, that person isn't even in white pages. That's not even a Keller Williams agent. Like we're <laughs> taken, not, not us. Um, or it, a situation gets handled. Um, so mm-hmm. like that is kind of like the good thing is that like there is a degree of I'm not super involved, but like, OK, there's a there is a real problem. There is a system in place that's going to address that problem. Yeah. Um, so whatever that complaint is, is going to be heard and addressed. Um, and I'm sure, before, like, like you said, some of the people that reach out via direct message probably want to c- talk about a negative experience they had w- in, in a real estate transaction. And, yeah. you know, everybody has that. And that's definitely a customer service issue. 
yeah. you know, and not um, a social strategist <laughs> issue. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, you'll be like, uh, I don't know, but here's a funny gif. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, you know, there's sort of stuff that's sort of outside the scope of my job description and expertise that sort of happens as a result of social media being a public channel. Um, right. but then there's other negativity that sort of crops up, like whether we've missed the mark on something or, um, somebody, um, just doesn't like Keller Williams, the brand, you know, there's like the, yeah. the, the, the well-known critiques of Keller Williams, like, oh, the Kool-Aid, um, whatever people want to say about that. Right. Um, and there's like, kind of, uh, if we addressed every single critique against us, like that's not good PR, that's not, you know, people are going to yeah, have, like you said it, like people are going to have criticisms. And, um, I, we firmly believe as a brand that what we are putting out there and what we're standing for, it kind of speaks for itself. Um, so Thankfully, there's not a lot of negativity. Most of the negativity we do get is like very like case by case basis. And like some of the, and you know, and I, I will say um, during the social uprisings that happened over the summer, we, we got feedback, but I took that very seriously. Like that kind right, of feedback well, that yes. we got about representation on our channels and photography assets and things like that. That was stuff that the entire marketing team, like we heard those comments and we took them very, very seriously. Um, mm -hmm. So we're paying attention, but I, like it's very case by case as far as what what we're choosing to say. That's just a you know, that's just Twitter. You know, people are going to get upset about this, or someone is going to tweet something that is false, and we're going to get our followers up in our DMs for three days, and I'm just going to ignore all of them because I can't. I it's not any good yeah, use of anybody's time to just argue with trolls, right? It's so. Tough. There's a you lot know, of like kind of PR strategy that goes into some of that for sure, um, but. Anything that is like being brought up that is tr not a troll, that is like a legitimate concern or a critique or, um, or you know, just a suggestion of like, oh, like we think that maybe it would be better. Like, I would love to see more of this or it would be better if y'all had done it like this. Like that is all stuff that I pay a lot of attention to in the marketing team as a whole. And like Keller Williams, like we, we love hearing from you. We love the feedback. And like, even if it's, not praise um we can still learn from that right so we yeah. want to be representing doing the best that we can um to represent the brand and to connect with you guys so yeah you know <clears throat> i see this a lot when agents run campaigns on facebook um and they're posting in lab coats and they're posting in the command group you know and they get a nasty comment on their ad you know what should i do this person says something really mean i'm like well you could do one of two things you could delete it or you could respond so yeah you know, a lot of the time, um, the comments on Facebook ads by agents, because they do tend to use a Facebook lead capture form, are people angry that they just can't see the house, yeah. you know, <laughs> and people don't understand that you're running a business. And in order to run a business, um, you know, you want to talk to the people who are, who are potentially interested in seeing that property. And if they're not interested in seeing the property, it will deter them. So, you know, you have to just kind of let some of that slide. Um, and at the end of the day, they look bad, not you. So just remember that. Um, somebody is so a Frederick on Zoom. He wants to know what some best practices are for an agent just kind of starting up in social media um, more along the lines of, I don't know if this is something that you, you, you touch on, but more along the lines of building, you know, SEO or Google juice or posting content on YouTube, like what would be some strategies around getting or moving up in the rankings or the algorithms? Yeah. Um, so as far as like YouTube and uh, Google and all of that, like, yeah, definitely SEO, like get clickbaity, get like really like search terms are um, publicly available. So like go and like go into the Google. I, I can't, I couldn't tell you the URL off the top of my head, but like you can. Yeah, I'm going to check while you talk. Cause I, uh, I remember yeah, there's a, like publicly available. You can see what the top Google search terms are. And if you go in and look at all of them, you should be including the ones that are relevant to real estate and like your business, your area, um, include those in your YouTube titles and your blog articles and what uh, your digital properties, um, just so you can get your search <laughs> rankings up that way. I found um, it. So before you continue, I'd just say it's Google, it's Google trends. So trends.google.com. And it's really awesome. You can type in a topic and then you can see all the different search terms that people are using to find those topics. It's really friggin' sweet. So I'll post it here in the chat and I'll post it on Facebook too. So sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. It's a really useful tool. Um, we use it. It's awesome. Um, 
other things to get. Um, so if you really want to kind of start getting picking up steam, um, there's two things you can do. First of all, social media, specifically Facebook, is pay to play now. Um, if you want to be seen, um, especially if you have a business page, you're going to have to start boosting posts. That's just like, period. <laughs> um, it's really unfortunate. It did not used to be like that. Um, but that is very much the case now. Um, and so you can do it for a small investment. It does not have to be a huge amount, but if you're, if you're a big priority for your business is growing your social media following a, make sure that like, it is worth the investment. Like, yes, I really want to grow on Facebook specifically because I'm getting a lot of leads through Facebook, like make that, make that judgment call before you start making this investment. But then I would, you're going to have to start budgeting a post for, you know, it just like you would budget for ads. I would budget for boosting some of your posts as well on Facebook um, and Instagram as well. You can do that all on the same platform. Um, things like Twitter, LinkedIn, don't spend money boosting your posts on that. I just don't like I have I have never had a successful LinkedIn ad campaign ever. Like unless you are literally trying to hire someone, if you're looking for leverage and yeah, like maybe you need to advertise. But in this job market, probably not. Um, but uh, <laughs> the don't, if you're going to spend money on social media and like you're really trying to grow your audience that way, I would you I would lean into spending money to grow your audience on Facebook and Instagram and like doing that with boosted posts. Um, organically growing your audience, that is going to be all about gaming the algorithm. And so that's just going to be about figuring out what kind of posts does the algorithm value on each channel. Facebook, that is going to be videos, long form videos three minute plus videos with human faces are going to do so well on Facebook versus a graphic that has text on it. Um, Instagram, again, human faces are a huge, huge thing. Like even if you're going to have something there, like with important information, if you slap it like on a carousel, if you open that carousel with a photo of like your smiling face, so many more people will see that post than if you just put a post up with text. Um, and a carousel also is a huge advantage for posting on Instagram because that will show up multiple times in people's feed. So they will see the first page of the carousel and they may be the second or third page of the carousel and then maybe they think the fifth or sixth um, and until they kind of interact with it a little bit more. So getting a little bit more strategic about getting what, what is going to do well. So like human faces are so highly valued by the algorithm. So as many times as you can put your face, but a different photo of your face, because if you post the same thing over and over again, the algorithm also punishes you. It, it gets, it's, it is very um, a mind pretzel <laughs> sometimes, um, but yeah, uh, you're a real estate agent, uh, lean into your selfie game, your headshot game, your photos of your clients, um, your photos of your family, like obviously get permission and all of that stuff, but like human faces are a really big deal on to the algorithm. Um, and then, yeah, just like what, what content does well, longer form videos on Facebook, carousels on Instagram, um, IGTV and reels right now on Instagram. Like, I know that that is a harder content to make and yeah. seems more niche and young. And like one of our strategic reasons about why we are engaging our reels and TikTok is actually more to talk to and attract like Gen Z real estate agents. Like we're trying to start thinking about the next generation of real estate agents and how are we going to connect with them and talk to them. And like, that's why we're on um, TikTok and Reels right now. Yeah. And I think that the earlier you can get in there, the more you're going to know how to use it, the more like the more time you're going to have a following by, by the time that your actual Gen Z buyers are really out there buying houses. Like you, like, and who knows whether TikTok is even going to be still like, the biggest thing for them, but like, Learn how to speak that language. Again, this language is evolving on these social media apps that also tend to be stratified based on generations. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be able to figure out how to talk to more of these people um, and attract the right kind of clients um, or uh, you know, talent to your own team or whatever it is that you're trying to do on social media. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have a question um, about stories because um, you know, I, I know a lot of people are us, utilizing them and they get a ton of traction. Um, and I noticed that my Instagram stories, I have like a fraction of the followers on Instagram that I do on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And my Instagram stories always get like triple the amount of interaction on Instagram than on Facebook. Yeah. Um, Facebook so why is that? A mess. <laughs> yeah. Like what, you know, why don't they just, I know they bought Instagram and thought they should do both, but, um, 
yeah, for someone who doesn't know what stories is, just briefly, um, you know, kind of tell us the kind of stuff you could post in there. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's horizontal video and then there's vertical video on social media. Um, and vertical video is where you're going to see like TikTok, Reels, stories. Um, and that's like you're shooting, your camera is like this space, um, very like handheld in the moment. Um, so stories are 24 hours. Um, you're posting in real time. Um, and it, it will basically only be up on your page for 24 hours. And it exists within a, its own micro feed within the news feed um, mm -hmm. that kind of functions yeah. more as like your scrolling channels, right? Like you're like flipping through the TV. Um, so you'll click onto one and it will just play through the list of everybody's stories that exist um, when you engage with it. So there's a lot of, a huge amount of engagement on stories. Um, on my personal Instagram, it's like something like a fifth like 20% of my followers watch my stories, which is like an insanely high amount versus something like, it's like 10% engagement is like industry standard for like someone liking your post, right? Right. Yeah. So there's a lot of potential there, especially as an agent with your own unique social media, where you might be reaching so many more people and getting more engagement on your stories than you will with just a post, which is like well, very, also very to me. I want to mention that with stories, you know, you can post stickers and you can ask questions and people can uh, vote on things and you can um, you do polls. Yes, you can ask, you can have, you can say, Hey, you know, you know, do you like these new shoes I got? Um, people can actually like write to you and it's, it's cool. It's a lot of, it's very fun and, and interactive. Like yes. I love that. So much more in a, like, I would say your Instagram feed is engaging, but it's engaging where, you know, you're going to post something and people are going to react to what you're posting. And like, yes, obviously that's the same thing in stories, but they're reacting to what you're posting by like clicking a button or like voting or answering yeah. a poll or, and there's also opportunities to get a little more playful with your brand. Um, like one of my, my like Instagram strategies is that, um, your feed is editorial. Um, and the, uh, what you're doing in stories is more authentic. So like huh. it's more curated. It's a little bit more like, it's going to look a little bit more polished. Yeah. Um, I think a lot about what our Instagram bird's eye view looks like, like a lot of like, how do these posts look together if someone visiting our page? Like, is this going to look like, is this like a wall of text? Is it like everything is red and also has KW like blasted all over it? Like I want it to look physically appealing both in the feed and like as a whole like as a collective yeah um whereas like on instagram stories it's sort of just like we're just gonna it's the aesthetics don't really matter as much like obviously they matter to some degree but you know it's sort of like okay we're gonna go from this to this to this mm -hmm. um we're gonna jump over here we're gonna do this like this is what my day is um and there's more opportunity to like show some fun and flexibility like memes jokes um you know what can you be doing with um what's available there like what what else is resonating with you that you can kind of bring into the umbrella of your brand that maybe you wouldn't bring on to like all the time right but like maybe there's just like something another interest that you have um that you can bring in and like talk about as part of your day on stories to you know further foster connections with your audience and like tell them about who you are um so yeah i love the possibilities within stories there's so much you know, um, we have to wrap up in a minute, but um, you mentioned that you have your own personal Instagram. And so when I thought about that, I, I, you know, when you have like the landscaper who has the worst lawn on the block <laughs> and you have the carpenter who has the ugliest, most dated kitchen, because by the time they get home from work, it's the last thing they want to do. I kind of picture like, does she have her own? Per she's focused. She's posting all day on all these other channels when and why does she have the energy or when does she post on her own personal Instagram? Like, that's what I picture social media strategists. I, like, like, you know what I mean? I feel that in my bones sometimes. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it's, it gets weird. Like I haven't posted on Facebook since 2017, I think I'm like, no, I, well, I, we're connected on Facebook. We're connected. Nothing, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like more of a lurker on Facebook these days. Like yeah. I look at the groups that I'm in. I like look at my feed every once in a while. I, I don't post like I, there are like no recent photos of me on Facebook. It's so weird. I just, I can't <laughs> well, do it. Then, I'm just like, I'm like so burnt out on that platform. I was still kind of ironic though. Yeah. It's but like, I, it, I'm burnt out from it. I just like, I, I yeah. can't look at, I have been looking at Facebook, the amount of 
the years of my life that has spent looking at the Facebook newsfeed is ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I mean, but there's part of my job is also like part of the reason I'm good at my job is that I still find social media fun. Right. So like a part of it is like, I have to be on these channels for our, for the company and also for my own skills. Like I need to, what is happening? What are people doing? What is new? What is fun? But also like I am, I am a, I am a deeply online person and I have yeah. always been a deeply online person. Like I was very, like I was on Neopets in like fourth grade, just like, I love the internet. I love message boards. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it, it's, I still love social media, even though I and do for the And for people who, cause someone commented, she's talking about, she doesn't post on Facebook for her personal page. She does oh, for Keller yeah. Williams. I post on Facebook so much for right. Keller Williams. I so, personally- I don't have the energy to post on Facebook. But I think it's funny because when you go to May's Facebook page and it says what she does for a living, it says chief social media strategist for Keller Williams. And then you scroll down and like she hasn't posted in four years. <laughs> it's just it's just funny because like all of your time is spent posting for them. Yeah, that's how I imagine it. Like, oh, my gosh, I have to post something on Instagram for my friends. Um, but, yeah, I just find that to be funny. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, this has been super fun and uh, very educational. And there's been a lot of great feedback on Zoom and on Facebook. People loved it. So we appreciate you being here. Um, yeah, it was awesome. I love answering y'all's questions and helping yeah. y'all become social media stars. What kind of fun? Yeah, like <laughs> what kind of fun stuff do you have planned? You know, family reunion is coming up uh, and it's going to be digital this year. Uh, you just released the family reunion video to show us the digital Good. platform which Good. already has some major upgrades uh over mega camp yeah, so what kind of stuff do you have planned? awesome I yeah what kind of like so videos you, this is gonna be awesome what kind of things you have planned like videos and you know um, you guys turn things around really quickly yeah um there's so much stuff that, that you should be expecting um uh as far as i'll spoil only some things for our social media channels okay um, so uh, we'll have our daily recap videos that I've been doing for a while now. Um, so you'll be oh, seeing cool. me doing that. Um, Y'all can expect some TikToks. Um, oh. So that will be fun. Um, I think we're going to do some Instagram lives. Um, there's there's a lot of really cool stuff that's going to just, just on our social media channels. And that's not even talking about the really insanely cool things that are going to happen at this event. Like there are going to be game shows. There's going to be competition. There's going to be really awesome networking. I am have not been as excited about a family reunion and I actually I was really excited about last year's family reunion because of the social booth but I am like even more excited about this year's family reunion because we got so creative and really dove into the ways that we can have fun um, while learning together and training together and it's going to be really awesome and um, y'all will see me all over the place <laughs> um, and yeah, there's just some really amazing ideas that came forward that I think you guys are going to love and I'm really yeah. excited about it. And yeah, we're going to have a social studio too. There's going to be a photo booth and a video booth with five teleprompters. I saw trips. that. That's so cool. Um, Y'all are going to look uh, really Tristan and, I, cool. Tristan and I helped with Agent Feud, which is yes. one of the game shows that you guys are going to do, which will be fun. Agent Feud is like a take on Family Feud, but questions like, What's the one, number one thing you'll find in an agent's car? The survey says. <laughs> yes. It's going to be you know, so uh, Old, like, you know, rotten salami sandwiches under the passenger seat. Um, so the anyway. Starbucks cups. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, exactly. That's and the answer. <laughs> well, um, May, thank you so much for, um, for, for being on this with us. Uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with May, you know, you can find her at all the Keller Williams handles, although she doesn't check the DMs, so you can't slide I, in I there. Sometimes check Someone Instagram else's DMs. job is to answer those. But um, yeah, uh, connect with me on the Keller Williams accounts, um, or you can follow me on Instagram. It's at May Gowan, M-A-E-G-O-W-I-N. That's probably where you should find me, um, is Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Well, have an awesome day. It looks so sunny there. We're, we're having winter here in Michigan, so I'm a little like jealous. But warm here. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope your air conditioner is pumping. Have an amazing day. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Uh, well, awesome. I'll see you digitally at, at you Mega Family Camp. reunion. Bye. Oh, family reunion. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I don't even know what month it is. It's all good. <laughs> all right. See you Bye. soon. Thank you so much.